decisions decide destiny i learned this very early in my life and i made certain covenant commitments as to my life and my destiny now let me tell you the truth and let me submit to you with all humility everybody you see today who is great and doing exploits for the kingdom whether in ministry whether in business in career none of them stumbled into greatness greatness is not a gift it is a reward for making quality decisions greatness is not a gift an enviable destiny is not a gift what god gives as a gift is time what god gives as a gift is the holy spirit what god gives as a gift is his word what god gives as a gift is pastors after his heart who can mentor and teach you need to know what is a gift and you need to know what is a reward a great destiny is not a gift a colorful destiny is not a gift the holy spirit is a gift the word of god is a gift a great man of god to mentor and build you is a gift but your destiny and the outcome of the same is a product of your decisions now please pay very close attention i want to give you six decisions that you must make in this conference and i give you a guarantee by the integrity of god's word any one of you that will make these six quality decisions do not assume that you understand what i'm saying if you make these quality decisions i give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of god's word you will look back at your life a few months a few years from now and all that you will see is a life of dignity and glory and color if you are with me say amen, amen. these decisions have no respect for your background these decisions have no respect for your current limitation these decisions have no respect for all of the disadvantages in your life even if you are an individual with no leverage whatsoever these decisions are the ladders that scale men into enviable destinies making maximum impact for the kingdom may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ decision number one very quickly are you ready the first decision you must make in your life if you want to shine forth and you want a life that brings glory to god is that you must make the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress in order of priority this is one of the greatest decisions you can make in your life the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13 jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13 here's what it says 9 13 and the lord said because they have forsaken my law which i said before them and have not obeyed my voice neither walked therein it says but have walked after the imagination of their own hearts after Balaam, which their fathers taught them that 15 now therefore thus saith the lord god of israel behold i will feed them even these people with warm wood and i will give them the water of gall to drink i will scatter them among the hidden whom neither they nor their fathers have known i will send a sword after them till i have consumed them why because they have refused to pay attention to my ways in matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 matthew 22 and verse 37 the first decision the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress 
not just spiritual progress exceptional spiritual progress matthew 22 37 22 37 jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart say all thy heart with all thy soul say all thy soul and with all thy mind thou shalt love the lord thy god not with half of your heart not with part of your soul not with one aspect of your life it says you shall love the lord with all 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 there are consequences to making this investment of knowing god yesterday we considered the scripture in daniel 11 and verse 32 that the people that do know their god the bible leaves them with an assurance that they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the decision to know god is a noble decision you must make up your mind that i will make maximum spiritual progress and watch this there are a number of indices in the bible that measures a man's spiritual progress number one the first biblical index to measure the strength of your spiritual progress is the health of your prayer life the health of your prayer life is a biblical measure of your spiritual growth number two the strength of your word study life i found your word and i did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul the health of your prayer life the strength of your word study life spiritual progress number three the strength of your character the degree of your conformity to the image and the character of the christ in experience this is a measure of your spiritual progress to what degree have you conformed or are you conforming to the image and the character of the christ in experience don't forget spiritual progress your prayer life your word study life your degree of conformity to the image and the character of god spiritual progress the outworkings of the grace and the power of god in and through your life is the fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth the outworkings of the grace and the power of god in and through your life don't say you are growing spiritually we have to look at the indices if you say you are making spiritual progress we have to gauge your statement against these four indices number one the health of your prayer life number two the strength of your word study life number three your character meaning the degree of conformity into the image of christ in experience to what degree are the fruits of the spirit at work in your life don't tell me I am Yoruba. Don't tell me I am Igbo. Don't tell me I am Hausa. Don't tell me I am this and that. No. When the character of Christ swallows you up, it lifts you beyond the limitations that come with your region. Don't say we are angry people. That's how we are. We are jealous people. No. When you make maximum spiritual progress, the life of God is able to swallow up these limitations. And then don't tell me you have known God and you are walking with the Word of God you are walking with the Spirit of God and we do not see the manifestation of the grace and the power of God in and through your life it is impossible is someone learning the first decision you must make if you want a life of grace and destiny and beauty and color and impact is the decision to make maximum spiritual progress let me therefore charge you by the message of god awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light there are many of you here who are lukewarm spiritually your prayer life is dead your word study life is dead your discipline of conformity into the character and the image of christ there is no passion there 
God is giving you a chance to realize that the decisions you are making to ignore God will have a consequence in your life tomorrow. Decision number two. What is the second decision to make if you want to shine forth and you want a life of glory and grace? Are you ready? The second decision you must make is the decision to contend for superior belief systems. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. In other words, a transformed mind. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. Second to your knowing God, second to your spiritual progress, is the depth and the level and the degree of your mental transformation. Forget about a destiny of beauty and color if your mindset remains at the same level. Now please look up. A transformed mind is not just an European mind. A transformed mind is not just a Western mind. A transformed mind is a mind that has been so cultured by the Word of God. Let this mind be in you, the Bible says, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Let this mind be in you. Jesus had a mindset. He had a philosophy. He had a set of beliefs that sponsored his excelling when he was on earth. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. The decision to contend for superior belief systems. Africa is the way it is, sadly and unfortunately, largely because of our belief systems. The West, in terms of technological advancement and development, is the way it is, largely because of a philosophy and a belief system they have decided to embrace. Can I tell you, until your belief system changes, your life will not change. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, he didn't say so he will become. He says so is he. You are already equal to your thought life. This is very important. There are many, many believers, tongue-talking believers who have not settled to obtain a superior belief system. And sadly, we continue to recycle pain and mediocrity in our lives. Let me give you two ways to contend for transformation. Number one, the first rule of transformation is that you must have a reference that looks like what you want to become. You cannot change into nothing. The Bible says, as we behold him, so that object that you desire to become, whether it is a man, whether it is a state, whether it is a higher dimension, you must have a picture of the future that you want to become. Transformation is difficult without a reference. Apostle, I want to become a great businessman. Like who? I want to become a great man of God. Like who? I want to know God so much. Like who? It says, look unto your father Abraham and to Sarah that bore thee. For I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. The Bible is not ashamed to tell us to look unto people. Look unto Abraham. Look unto Jesus. You want to be transformed, you must have a reference. Number two, transformation requires access to superior information. Write it down, please. Access to superior information. Information that is word compliant and can transform your understanding. This is where the place of books, this is where the place of teachings, this is the place of useful resources in helping your mindset comes into play. Most of us are lazy. 
you may have heard me say it that when you are lazy both god and the devil cannot use you god will not be able to use you even the devil will not be able to use you because both of them require a level of diligence even if it's the devil you want to serve you must still be diligent laziness is one area that whether from god's side or from satan's side you are still a disadvantage to them both hallelujah now listen when a young man is sleeping for 12 hours 10 hours every day not doing anything you wake up in the morning and stretch yourself as if you are 60 70 years not doing anything and then the next thing you pick up your phone waste away another three or four hours let me tell you this you are programming pain in the later years of your life the bible says i think that's lamentations 3 27 or so or 25 he said it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth you must obtain grace go for knowledge go for knowledge 327 it is good for a man that he bears his yoke in his youth someone prophesy say i contend for transformation shout it say i contend for transformation rather than living a fake life wearing what is not your own eating what is not your level snapping behind people's vehicles and homes and putting it online rather than living all those kinds of unreasonable lives it is better to stay with god and stay with men who have made it and begin to transform your mind can i tell you anywhere your mind goes to your body must eventually follow i assure you if your mind has gone to canaan even if your body is in egypt your mind will force your body to follow it to canaan the future that your body cannot enter now send your mind there and your mind will direct your body like an usher to enter that reality this is a fact anything your mind has caught your body must express it any dimension your mind has gone to it is impossible for your body to not follow the decision to contend for mental transformation go and buy books go and get materials technology and the internet has made it very easy now with the cheapest data available you can have access to an array of resources that can build your mind so you do not have an excuse apostle i do not have a dvd player know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you and ye have of god and ye are not your own verse 20 20 now 6 20 first corinthians it says for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit both of them are god glorify god in your body to glorify God in your body is not just to abstain from wrong living, a wrong lifestyle, a licentious lifestyle. That is one aspect. But there are many people who may not be victims of any wrong sinful lifestyle, but they are victims of mismanaging their bodies. It is also sin. Because the Bible says your body is God's property. You may not drink or smoke or sleep around but you mismanage your body it is still sin the decision to be healthy the decision to be physically strong are we together usually at the end of the year i have retreats 
and in my retreats I usually gauge my progress against some of these indices that I'm mentioning and for three years in a row I noticed that the least performing area in my life was the area of my health and my physical well-being it wasn't just because of carelessness let me tell you the truth one day a father of faith in this nation called me after a conference and he said apostle let me warn you he said be careful with your health Africans kill their prophets and that thing was a message because some of you sometimes as you keep mismanaging your body most people do not know how to take care of their bodies when it's time to fast fast but when there is time to eat eat are we together I believe in divine healing and I believe in the power of God but if you find out that your health is deteriorating do not be ashamed and afraid to go and see a doctor there is nothing wrong while you are growing in the understanding of the Zoe life don't die the death of a fool because of pride if you are sick and you pray you lay your hands and it does not work go with honor to the hospital and meet a doctor to treat you when you are fine then you can now have the time to study more about that eternal life until it becomes an experience please hear me hear me there are many people who have brought trouble to themselves medical doctors will tell us that most sicknesses if detected early can be solved there are many many unnecessary prayer points that have come over our lives and our bodies purely because of carelessness hallelujah it is important for you to manage your body some of you the greatest enemy of your life is gluttony even if you are sleeping and they bring food in front of you supernaturally like word of knowledge you will wake up and see it and you must eat before you go back to sleep remember what the sons of the prophet told the prophet they said there is death in the pot death can also be in the pot death is not just on the road with an accident even in the pot if you mismanage your eating there can be death in the pot it's time to be healthy there are many young people 27 30 years they can't walk from here to here and they were not born like that you climb a staircase you are already breathing as if you will die my friend obtain grace to go to the gym go and walk on yourself go and walk on yourself go and walk on yourself in the name of Jesus for the sake of those who you will be preaching to for the sake of the destinies that are connected to you you can be a young man of 27 30 years you are already breathing you just dance during praise and worship and you have to take two bottles of water to survive the remaining part of the service no sir no sir no sir hallelujah i hope you are learning if we have a night vigil and our elderly ones are falling asleep that's fine we can give it to them but a young man you are starting a vigil from 10 o'clock one hour into the vigil you're already sleeping even while you are standing oh come on it's not just a spiritual issue you need to work on your body Go and read what you read in biology and basic science, the six classes of food. Because some of you, with what you are eating, except God shows you mercy, you are, it's as if you are removing one, one year from your life because of carelessness. Don't be offended. I love you. Listen, look up, please. In Africa, we think 
that the idea of prosperity is to make sure you eat to a point where it's like a revenge mission everything you could not eat when you didn't have money you now go to the restaurant five wraps of swallow and the soup that five people will use only you you sit with the cooler in front of you two bottles of minerals one whole chicken one whole agri chicken and when you eat everything you say my soul find rest no 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 Are you learning? Let me give you a very kind advice. Jesus made a statement we are wrapping up. He said, he that will not walk should not eat. That is a medical advice. If you don't plan to walk, he's saying don't eat. Because if you keep eating without walking, there is an effect it brings to your body. It's not just a religious statement is a medical advice before you eat find out what is the work that would justify this food i'm going to eat that means the less your work the lighter should be your eating it's a medical advice there are people who can eat five chickens and the nature of the work that they do that energy will be burnt into ashes while they walk you see, our fathers had the privilege of eating heavy because they were largely agrarians. They would go to the farm and farm out that energy. Our mothers would trek to the market, but our generation is an E generation. Your office is in your room. Everything is in your room. As you step out, there is a protocol. Then there is a plane that picks you. Then you land and you are still eating like a farmer. He that will not walk should not eat. He that will walk small should eat small. Decision number five. Please hear me. God lifts men through men. Even Jesus needed certain men. His relationship with them was the basis for his rising. For instance, Jesus had to encounter three prophets in the lifetime of his ministry to rise. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist. Jesus, your Jesus. Hallelujah. Do not ignore relationships. You will pay a very dear price for it. Some of you, you are here at this youth conference right now. God is introducing the next sets of destiny helpers for you. Make sure you take advantage of it. Don't look down on anyone simply because they do not carry a semblance of what you want. Because you may pay that price tomorrow. My life today has been greatly enhanced through the power of quality strategic relationships. Let me ask you one question and then we pray. Please look at me. Is there anybody in your life today who loves you enough to be there for you if you cry? I'm not talking about your father or your mother. Have you invested in any relationship enough? Is there someone in your life today who can stand up and say, I hear you have a problem with rent. God forbid. I love you too much to leave you in shame is there someone who can arise today and say your children cannot suffer not under my watch let me tell you the truth relationships are investments it is fraud to experience to want returns on an investment you did not invest in if you did not sow into quality relationships don't expect that people will just give you their time their life, their attention, their value, not even God. 
relationships are streams of income you can literally live off relationships for the rest of your life that someone can say i am in oil and gas another person say i am in in a building and construction and you can say i earn a living building and maintaining relationships hallelujah maybe this is a word for someone you have been neglecting relationships and you don't care about anybody you can step on any toe and it does not matter the most important thing is you are looking for things very soon you will learn that the reason why things have value is because there are men if there are no men things do not have value it is the presence of men that gives things value Every time sound or light goes off we begin to pray in the spirit until power is restored there should never be a time wasted so learn it as a culture every time the mic maybe for there's a power outage or because it happens are we together if if it happens immediately just begin to pray in tongues because you are investing that time even if it is two minutes it should not be wasted in the presence of god is that a healthy culture